Greetings, once again, in the precious name of Jesus, and we are grateful to the Lord for once a day, allowing us to come into this day. For truly, without cliche, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're thankful for the wisdom that he gives us to rejoice and be glad in it. We may not know what a day will bring, but one thing we can trust in is that being in the hand of the Lord, he knows what the day will bring. We used to sing the song, you know, I don't know about tomorrow. There are many things about it I don't understand. But this one thing I know, as Job said, if I just hold on and continue, he knoweth the way that he's taken for me. And after we have been tested, it's true, you'll come forth like pure gold. Again, we're grateful to the Lord and the many great things that are appearing from day to day amidst the devastation, the trials, the tests, the tribulation, the Afghanistan debacle, all of these things. We are praying for the families. They are very important, as we so often say, as the prophet said, uh, our safety is in the safety of the city, this country. And many things we may not agree with, many things we may not go along with, but our prayers, as Pastor Paul tells us, to pray for those that are in rulership. We're coming a day when they won't have to worry about all of the wars, the Bible tells us. It'll be a time where there'll be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Today, by the help of the Lord, we shall go to a passage of scripture out of the prophet Jeremiah and also New Testament, the book of Ephesians called the book of the heavenlies. It, as most times uh, theologically in studies, it is a parallel with Joshua of the Old Testament, whereas we find ourselves in a new position as God has called us in this parenthetical age of grace. Jeremiah chapter 23, chapter 19, I shall be reading from the message translation, and from Ephesians, I will be reading from the King James Version. Verse 19 of Jeremiah 23, look out, God's hurricane will be let loose. My hurricane blast, spinning the heads of the wicked like tops. And for Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And by the help of the Lord, we want to lift from this passage of scripture the theme, spinning tops, out of that verse in Jeremiah in the translation, spinning tops. And for a Bible will say, we'd like to use and share with you, have you repeat, and when the spinning stops, there's grace. And when the spinning stops, there's grace. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you today in the precious name of Jesus for the greatness, the good things that you have done for us. Lord, we even thank you for you have shared with us all things work together for good. Lord, the things that we dislike and the things that seem unfavorable to us, yet you who know all things have prepared them for us that we may go through and see the greatness of the God that we serve. Touch our minds, open our understanding, lighten our eyes. Bless the ears of the listeners, Lord, to cause their minds, their heart to be receptive, understanding the word that you have for them this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Spinning tops. The truth revealing the grace of God is unfamiliar for most believers based upon being acolytes of traditional teaching, which perhaps unwittingly is remiss in grace's significance for the believer in the meaning of their sinlessness in Christ. I want you to get that. Thus, because of this unfamiliarity, its truth is rejected by many. We're talking about grace. And yet more so, misunderstand stood by even more uh, one thing for certain um, we, we in this day and age and has been throughout 
these last two millennia, uh, there's always been the, the debate, which should not be, instead of the understanding among believers of what it is that salvation is all about. I know it is true we have these sectarian groups and it, it all because someone we feel uh, that they stray or they don't have the right interpretation or uh, we feel like that they don't know. Uh, nonetheless, it is true what Paul shared with them in his day that, that there ought to be the gathering together and the mindset of thinking the same thing. If somebody says, well, that can't happen. It's not true. Everybody's going to think different. Well, you're right in the sense because it's paradoxical in the reality. It is true that we won't, as the old writers say, the watchman will see eye to eye until the Lord has brought to consummation all things in God. It's true, though, that uh, uh, it's of God, things that do occur. We never once will dismiss that thought. Uh, it's true, whatever happens or goes on today, uh, we don't know, but we will say, as James has taught in the word, if the Lord's will. Now, however, yesterday is past, and we can say it was God's complete will. Well, back to the thought of thinking alike. Paul says, I wish to know nothing, desire to know nothing among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, it's true that uh, as we look through the history and the annals of history uh, and church history we're talking about, uh, we find that many times uh, we have become so zealous for the Lord that we desire to actually operate salvation our way. Yes, it's true. I believe, as Paul shared on uh, occasions in his writings, that there were certain stipulations or policies look like you had to lay down to help people, as Paul said, make straight path for the crooked feet. And it's true, it means that sometimes people seem to veer, and so he shares with us there is teaching. And uh, he told Timothy, uh, teach men or those who are able to teach others. In other words, just don't throw the teaching out the window, but, but find those that have the ability to not only comprehend, but they're able to transmit or transfer that knowledge, that information to others. Uh, as Paul said on numerous occasions, uh, he, he would not, and throughout the scripture, God will not have us ignorant. Uh, he desires us to know. So this grace that we talk about, the Bible shares with us that it's paramount, it's supreme to the believer and his or her relationship with God. You, you got to understand this, uh, true, uh, uh, and, and this is one thing that I think we get to forget about is God's work is not ours. Yes, we love to see people saving. We love to see people coming to the Lord, and, and I'm one. I love to watch the Billy Graham crusades and the, the myriads of people that come uh, uh, down and, and want to receive the Lord. Uh, it, it's an amazing sight to see. Now, the thing is that uh, it takes God, though, to call. It is true, as the Bible said, everyone that came up out of Egypt, they were not coming out because they felt a nearness to Jehovah. They didn't feel like that they were attached to Moses' call and hit what God had sent him to do. To them, it was a way out. It was a way for them to come away from Pharaoh and the government there and maybe to find a new land wherein there were new laws that were more, uh, that appeased them more than the laws 
or the constitution of Egypt. Uh, so the Bible said a mixed multitude left Egypt. And this is to say that everyone that comes to the church and everyone that even that seems like a desire to be called to be saved is not, not at the moment. Uh, it, it's God. Uh, God has not written and shared with any of us uh, who he's calling and those whom he's not. That's why I'm very careful when I attend a funeralization of an individual, whether we want to say they're saved or unsaved, because that is solely in the, in the uh, jurisdiction of God. No one else. I know I've had my little debates with uh, uh, colleagues and uh, folk who say, I, I know who's saved and who's not saved. Well, except God told you that, uh, it's apparently that you have mistaken and have misunderstood God's word uh, and uh, you're teetering on the point of an untruth uh, because the Bible doesn't tell us that. Uh, it's a work of God uh, and he is doing it. He's calling those that he desires for a particular era that's coming up. And the Bible said he wants to show his exceeding greatness. Now, I know some say, well, he, he's a God that's supposed to be of love and he's got others that he's thrown away. No, no, that's not God. That is a traditional teaching. Uh, but, but you got to go through God's word and that's not where we're going to traffic today. But we definitely will say uh, uh, if God is the God of love that you and I believe, uh, then as somebody phrased and said long time ago, love will find a way. And that's what I love about God. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. Somebody says, but what can you do? They're dead. Leave it to God. Because I, I declare, uh, he said, uh, through the Christ, uh, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So this is the good thing about God. Uh, even death does not hinder God from doing a work that God desires to do. Uh, so well, let's get back to grace. So grace, uh, it, it, it works with the relationship of the believer with God. Uh, it is a complete vindication or or a justification or an acquittal uh, that's found entirely on grace. Uh, and that's what it's all about salvation, that is. Uh, it's founded on grace. Uh, one has been vindicated, justified, uh, or acquittal, uh, and is all based on grace. The thing about it uh, is that grace cannot be defeated. This is found in Romans chapter 5, where he shares with us, Yet law came in by the way, that the offense should be increasing, yet where sin increases, uh, grace super exceeds. Now, Paul shares with us, and I'm not going through Romans, the Magna Carta of the believers, uh, liberty in God or in Christ uh, for God. It's here where he explicitly shares with us about grace and what it does for us. He shares that if it's of works, it only can be by the law. And we are not under law, but we are under grace. He says, so grace uh, cannot be by works. Uh, it's only that that is given to somebody. You don't earn it, but it was given to you by God. Uh, he said that even as uh, sin reigns in death, thus grace also should be reigning through righteousness or life eonian, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, let's stop there for a minute and take a look at it. He's saying, so then, uh, here is sin. Sin, remember we said, and she tells us further back up here in this same chapter, as we call it, five. Uh, he says that it is death that was passed on, and because death is the devitalizing thing, it is the thing that does not have the vitality to give us what we need to give God the glory or that he can get the glory out of our life. Uh, either way you want to put it. Uh, now listen to this. So he said sin reigns in death. Uh, that's why you must realize Jesus says, I've come that they may have life uh, and that more 
abundantly. In other words, it is death that he has to get rid of in order that one could live like God wants them to live. That's why the Bible tells us that if we are dead to sin, death has come in, uh, then we no longer have to worry about living or our members being used for unrighteousness because Jesus Christ Christ, uh, his death, uh, it was for our sins. Uh, you know the song we sing, living he loved me and dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Now all sins, uh, you got to understand this, uh, sins are were taken away in his death burial and in resurrection we become justified. Uh, you just gotta hold it there. No, we're not saying everybody is saved. No, no, you gotta take your time, see God's word. Uh, God calls, but uh, you have to realize this. Again, I'll make the statement uh, sins, all of them, they were buried with Jesus the Christ. Now, it works a lot for there's another step to go. We're not going to go there today, but just remember, sins are. Uh, they were covered then. Uh, but God has to call one out uh, in order to give them his spirit uh, that they can live for him. So the other part of this, he says that, and so thus grace also should be reigning through grace uh, uh, or, or through righteousness uh, or life. Life Eonian. In other words, uh, then grace, it reigns through righteousness. Remember what the Bible tells us? It says that uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us uh, that we may become the righteousness of God. Uh, so then uh, uh, when God calls us, uh, he puts on us his righteousness uh, and thus his grace works by faith uh, through the righteousness that he puts upon us. Uh, here the Bible tells us then that grace is not a license to sin. Uh, shall we continue in sin? Paul writes right here because what he does, he goes on and shares with us in the verse we read in the opening of our thematic presentation. Uh, and he says that where sin uh, is uh, Ever coming up, this is what it says, uh, grace super exceeds or abound. Uh, and I know some says, no, you can't teach that because folk will believe that if they sin and grace is covering them, that they can do anything. Well, not only is the devil a liar, but whoever is saying that is also because God's word allows us to know that his spirit Spirit comes to us within us uh, to give us power, as John says, uh, which is greater than us, our flesh, we who are in the world. Uh, and, and so when God, that's the difference. When God calls someone, he calls them, and it's true, uh, he now has given them his righteousness wherein grace works. Uh, and it, it's true, uh, you, you cannot find yourself ever uh, being in a place where grace will not super exceed. Uh, and so, but the Bible Bible says those that are filled with the Spirit, uh, they endeavor, as Paul says, uh, he says, I, I press forward the mark uh, for the prize. In other words, God's Spirit puts something within us, uh, a desire to live for him who has, we use the phrase as Peter said, brought us out of darkness uh, and into a marvelous life. Uh, and so by grace then are we saved through faith. Uh, and so look what Paul does. Uh, and if I may say, notice in every one of Paul's writings, uh, everyone, uh, his salutation is grace. Uh, 
and peace be unto you. Now, I, I, the history of PTL, praise the Lord, and all of these other things, I don't know where they originated from, uh, and it's hard to follow them back. Uh, however, we hear Mary sharing the uh, stories of it. Say, they used to say it because they used to tell people, uh, uh, give God some praise, and the other person would give a praise to God. That's what praise the Lord meant, and so it just was not a cliche, but as you see, there are slippery slopes with even good things. Uh, and so now it is just praise the Lord. Uh, but why would we not continue biblically what Paul says in salutations in all of his epistles, general and personal? Uh, he always says grace and peace be unto you. It's Peter who now is of the circumcision. He's preaching to the circumcision. He and James uh, and Jude. And, and he tells us, he said, grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, James doesn't use it at all. He writes nothing about this grace. Uh, Jude does not either. Uh, and, and John may use it once himself in the first epistle. But it's Paul who's writing, who to the uncircumcised, God has given the revelation of this grace. Uh, so we want you to understand then that grace, uh, it is a power that God has uh, that will bring those who are called uh, to the place where God will have them, as Jews said, now unto him that is able. It is the power of the grace of God, for nothing can exceed grace. Uh, so we come to our theme, spinning as a metaphor. And when we talk about some, something is spinning out of control, we're talking about moving in a way where control is non-existent. Uh, when things seem to get worse, uh, we call it a downward spiral. Uh, when a solution or resolution uh, seems unattainable, uh, that's when we say things are just spinning out of control. Uh, we use the term spinning your wheels, which means uh, that there's activity activity going on, but you're literally not getting nowhere. Uh, have you ever been there, not just in your social life, uh, but your spiritual life, even your personal life, uh, sometimes in your goals, you say, I'm not getting nowhere. Uh, look like I'm just spinning my wheels. Uh, in other words, the term is used when something has gone very wrong. Uh, in physics, believe it or not, uh, it is said almost everything in the universe either rotates or spins. Uh, yes, even particles. Ah, for my physics students, uh, I, I'm not talking about now the, the bison. We're talking about working with how the particles work and some, uh, there is one that they say doesn't move at all. It, it's a fundamental because it's on a scalar uh, level. Uh, in other words, it just has motion. Uh, it doesn't have a vector to it, uh, which means direct and speed. And so when we are talking about then everything in the universe is either rotating or turning, even we think about this earth. This earth is rotating and they share with us that Witten force, centrifugal force, centrifugal force, the force that pushes out. Uh, if it wasn't for centripetal force, the force that counters that in pushes in, which uses gravity, everything would fly off of the earth. Think about where we are and what Adam has done. Adam's sin calls us to come here and we are simply spinning out of control. I used a verse in Jeremiah, not that I wanted to talk about Jeremiah's time, but I wanted to show the emphasis there where even the Bible uses a time when God gets upset uh, and he talks about the whirlwind which is a swirling, it's a rotation it's a turning uh, 
and he says that those who were leaders in that day, uh, uh, they weren't being truthful to the people and, and God was going to work it uh, so that they were going to have it on their heads, uh, spinning heads or spinning tops. Uh, in other words, they would go into confusion uh, and that's what most times happens when you take someone when you were kids uh, and we used to spin each other around, take a little kid and spin them around uh, and when you stop them, they be confused. There's no equilibrium there. They're twisting and almost falling. Uh, confusion has set in. Uh, and so in the mind, when things are going down the rabbit hole, uh, we call it confusion. It's spinning. Uh, and so the Bible tells us that it's true then, uh, a metaphor among mankind. Uh, spinning is not a good thing for us. Uh, Adam has us all spinning out of control and had it not been for God's mercy his grace uh, which would be like centripetal force uh, it pushes it counters the thing uh, whereby the law came it was good but it brought no power uh, and thus we kept on spinning uh, when we think about then what God does for us uh, our faith in God it counters uh, many times the problems that come in our life. Uh, remember those in Hebrews, it talks about by faith. Uh, listen when your world look like it's spinning uh, and it looks like you're out of control. Uh, your faith as we say can look up to God and bring you deliverance. Uh, the Bible tells us that then uh, we find that missing the mark with God uh, it is the thing that causes us uh, to be apart from him uh, for centrifugal force pushes out. Uh, it pushes us away from God, our flesh, our mind, uh, our rebellious thoughts. Uh, but by the power of his spirit, uh, the centripetal force causes us to bring a balance. Uh, let me help you out as I close out here. Uh, when we talk about spinning, it's like a top. Uh, when I was young we used to have what they call a spinning top. Uh, we would put the little rope around it and we'll fling it and the top would spin and spin and spin. Uh, but notice now uh, that as the top uh, using Newton's second law uh, of motion uh, and in other words nothing will stop in its motion uh, if it's not opposed by something else. Uh, well, what happens because the top is not a perpetual motion machine. Uh, it cannot just keep on spinning and spinning. Uh, it's going to slow down uh, and eventually uh, it's going to topple over because gravity is working on it. Uh, centripetal force. Uh, and that's like our lives today. Uh, we sometimes feel like things are pushing us out from God. Uh, things are blowing out from us and we cannot seem to hold on to things. Uh, look like finances are being blown apart. Uh, relationships look like are going south uh, and things are being blown apart. Uh, but listen, my friend, what God desires for us is like the spinning top. Uh, we must stop and allow gravity, uh, which is grace is always there. Uh, when that top stops spinning, uh, it literally just falls over and succumbs to gravity. Uh, whenever we stop fighting against God, uh, trying to do things our way, uh, that centrifugal force pushing out against God's will for our lives, uh, we'll find ourselves like the top. Uh, we'll fall down in humble submission uh, not at death but to the will of God while we are living. Uh, we always want to use that when somebody's die uh, uh, that we humbly submit to the will of God uh, but let me share with you while living your life daily uh, you need to humbly submit to God uh, like the writer said humble thyself uh, under the mighty hand of God and God 
will uh, he'll raise you up do great things in your life uh, well the top it stops spinning uh, and when it does uh, a gravity takes hold uh, well grace is uh, always there it's like gravity uh, while you're spinning out of control uh, like Apostle Paul fighting against God uh, it's hard to kick against the pricks uh, but my friend listen uh, as soon as you find yourself slowing down uh, and crying out and saying Lord uh, help me to stop spinning uh, Lord uh, stop the spinning in my life uh, you'll find out grace will be there uh, and the things that have gone wrong uh, the Bible said grace super exceeds uh, I know you thought uh, that you're just going to throw it all away uh, because it looked like you had failed uh, looked like you ought to walk out the door uh, because you didn't come up the standards like God said you ought to uh, but my friend I share it with you uh, he's that type of God uh, that's the father that's standing back there uh, just waiting for that son uh, to stop spinning around in the pig pen uh, and learn uh, that back home my father uh, he still owns the place uh, and if I can just get back there uh, grace will be there uh, today my friend uh, listen uh, don't be a spinning top uh, but allow God uh, to let you come back to him uh, because grace uh, his grace is sufficient uh, and God uh, will always uh, draw you closer to him uh, as you draw nigh to him uh, listen today uh, spinning tops is too many uh, we'll have them in our life uh, but God says uh, grace it's there thank God for grace uh, yes like David said foot it could slip steps could be well nigh gone but listen when you turn around and head back uh, grace will always be there today you don't have to be a spinning top you can allow God to work in your life. Just remember, let the spinning stop so grace can do her great work. God bless you today. Hopefully, we didn't go through a lot, but we want you to understand God wants you to know what grace is all about. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you today. We thank you. Great things, Lord, have you done for us. We're off. We are glad. And we thank you. We bless you, Lord, again and again for the life, for the word. Lord, for the great things that you're just doing daily, Lord, in our life. For all things are working together for good. And more so, your grace is satisfying me. Lord, grace that's greater than all of our sins. Lord, what would we do without your grace? Marvelous grace. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you again and again for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.